Hi, I'm Patu from Free FinCal and in this video, let's discuss what is meant by long term in equity and what is short term. Before that, I want to uh, wish all my viewers and readers a very happy and prosperous 2019. Let's hope uh, uh, we don't uh, be not stressed about our money or about anything uh, uh, in life. We are more at peace with ourselves and uh, we uh, hope to become fitter than we were in 2018. So let's get started. So you might have heard um, people talk about uh, equities for the long term, but what does it long term mean? Is it three years, five years, 10 years? What does it mean? Is there a way to define what, uh, how long is long? So that's what we're going to look at. So this is a um, annual returns of ICICI top 100 fund. This is a graph that I slow show in every one of my talks. I've also shown this in a couple of videos before. So you can notice that the uh, returns are uh, fluctuating up and down. You know, uh, it's extremely volatile. Now that green line right there is the average, is the arithmetic average of the of all those returns. Of course, it doesn't make any sense because the fluctuation is too much. Suppose I find out uh, how much does each return uh, deviate from the average. So that's the blue line. How much does each return deviate from the average? That's the green line. If I find that out and calculate the average of all those blue lines, that's called the standard deviation or the volatility. It's a measure of volatility of the uh, data set that I have. So now let's say I list those uh, annual returns from 2003 to 2014. And I ask myself, what is the, what can I expect from ICICI top 100 over five years? Suppose I invest, uh, I want to invest for five years. I want to, with this data set, tell me what, what return can I expect from ICICI top 100 over the next five years? People will give you random answers like 10%, 12%, 15%, 20%. They're all junk. I mean, they, uh, it's just nonsense. If you want to understand um, how much to expect, then you must look at past data and you must look at the rolling returns. So let's look at the, uh, five year period from 2003 to 2007 and in this five year period the uh, annualized return has been 47% and if I move this five year window by one year that's from 2004 to 2008 that's 13% then if I move it down one more year it's 23% 17% 4% 3% 19% 14% so sometimes you get 47% sometimes you get uh, lower than a uh, savings bank account uh, from ICICI top 100 so please tell me what return will you expect uh, over the next uh, five years. Now, if I just give you the average of all these numbers, the average will be 17.5%. But that average doesn't mean anything. I should also calculate how much does each uh, individual five-year uh, return that I've calculated deviate from the average five-year return. And that's 13.7%. That's called the standard deviation. And uh, so we report the uh, five-year returns that we have studied in this data set as 17.5% plus or minus 13.7%. That's the spread in the returns. If the spread is 13.7%, please tell me how can you expect anything? You, you cannot expect anything. All you can expect is it can be anything. That's the only expectation from this. So now let me uh, extend this study. So let's take the Sensex total returns index from 1979 to 2017. I uh, have not updated this. Uh, since then. So suppose I take that and I want to look at every possible 3 year period, 5 year period, 10 year period, 15 year period, 20 year period, 25 year period. I want to look at every possible 3, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 year period between 1979 to 2017. And I calculate the average annualized return or the CAGR, the compounded annualized growth rate for those uh, 3 year, 5 year 7 year, uh, 10 year, 12 year, 15 year, uh, 20 year, 25 year period. And that's the green line. Now look at the green line alone. If somebody asks me what is the average return for if I invest in Sensex for the next 10 years or 15 years or 20 years, look at the average. Whether it is 3 year period or 25 year period, the average is practically the same. It's pretty much a flat line. The, the deviation and the average is very, very small. So does it mean... Uh, uh, whether I invest in uh, for next three years or 25 years, I, I can expect the same return. That's obviously wrong. You cannot expect the same return. So what is missing is the standard deviation of the volatility. Look at the standard deviation now. So uh, if you look at for the three year period, 
the standard deviation is higher than the average. This is like saying for the next three years or uh, for any given three year period, the return will be 17% plus or minus 22% or something like that. That makes no sense, right? Then look at the five year period. Again, it is like 17% plus or minus uh, almost 15%. Again, it makes no sense. But notice as the duration uh, keeps increasing, the standard deviation uh, falls below the average and it keeps falling and keeps falling and keeps falling and it goes down and it, uh, uh, it's like 1%, 2%, 3% or so on over the long term. Still there will be a deviation. Please do not assume from this graph, please do not assume if I invest over 20 years, I will get 15% plus or minus 3% or 4%. That is, well, that's not, a, it's a reasonable assumption, but please note that 79, 1979 to 2017 is still a very short period uh, from the point of view of statistics. But for, uh, based on what we have, this is it. So I would, if you are lucky, um, after paying all taxes to get 10% after 20 years, you should, uh, I mean, uh, you should count yourself lucky. That's how I look at it. So this is, um, this can be used to define what is short term and long term. Now, we can make some kind of thumb rules based on this. We can say that for the within five years, don't use any kind of equity because the volatility is comparable to the average. That means that it's like saying I will get 10% plus or minus 10%, which means I can get anything. I can get zero. So it's a huge risk. So for over five years, so don't do that. Then over, let's say five to 10 year periods, if I want to in, uh, invest for over five, 10 year period, I can have a little bit of equity exposure, let's say 10% to 30%, maybe a little more if you're uh, comfortable with uh, risk management and so on. And above that, you can probably have anywhere between 50 to 70% uh, equity exposure because the volatility has come down. And uh, I would recommend 60% in my robo advisory template. But that's essent uh, That's one way to look at the, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, look, look at this graph and define what is short term and what is long term. So I would define short term as anything uh, within five years and long term as anything about 10 years and intermediate term as somewhere between five to 10 years. Of course, these are thumb rules uh, which we have, uh, uh, you know, manually inserted. So, I mean, you can, you can argue that this is different, that's different and so on, but that's fine. But you must have your own set of uh, rules to go with. So that's how you can use the return and the volatility to define what is short term and what is long term. What is very important is that the asset allocation must change with time. So let's say I'm today I'm starting. Um, so I give this example all the time. I started investing for my son's um, education. Uh, just before he was born. So my son is almost nine now. But uh, when when I started, I had 18 years for his, uh, uh, for him to enter college. So that's like 18 years is somewhere here. But now that 18 years is cut, cut down to nine or uh, 10. So what was a long term goal for me nine years ago has now become an intermediate term goal. So I must reduce my equity. And uh, soon it will become a short term goal. So a long term goal will become an intermediate term goal and then it will become a short term goal with passage of time. So as you, uh, you know, as time passes, you must understand that the deep equity exposure must be reduced. Otherwise, the risk in the portfolio will become huge because this volatility is or the standard deviation is extremely high. As you, you know, as this, as you keep going down, uh, uh, as a deadline approaches, the volatility shoots up. And that's very important to recognize and reduce the equity allocation. Of course, you can use the robot advisory template from FreeFinCal, which is found on the main menu at FreeFinCal.com and you can uh, um, you know, have come up with an asset allocation plan, a stepwise reduction in asset allocation plan on your own. So that's how you can look at risk and uh, risk and uh, average return and uh, define what is short term and long term. I'll catch you again in 2019. Bye bye.